In this lesson, I'm going to show you a little bit more on the editing capability of um, audio files that we've embedded into our HTML, I mean into our Flash, sorry. <laughs> um, as well as we'll begin um, with importing some video and some uh, useful information on that. So first of all, with our regular uh, Layer 1, I'm going to name this uh, audio layer. Um, once, once we've imported our audio, so we can import it. Um, I'm just going to import that same song that we had a while ago. And once it's here, I'm going to move the properties back to where it was, which was at the beginning. And if I create a keyframe here at the end, once you create the keyframe, that tells it, okay, now we have distance to run. Until then, you won't have the option to insert your audio. But once it's here in our library, we've created a keyframe. Um, now we can insert this audio. Now we've done this before, but what I wanted to show you was, let's pull the properties out on its own for a sec here, is effect. We've already dealt with sync. Effect, um, fade in, fade out, but even more than that, if you hit edit, it brings up its own little editing win window for the audio. And of course we have the same options here, but if you've ever worked with any audio editing programs, this is, this is kind of neat because it's a miniature version that allows you to fade it in and out how you want. See this over here? This allows you to pull. That would mean that the, that channel had zero um, loudness to it, basically. This has full loudness, so we could move it down to the same level. Left and right channels here. Now. See how when you move the top one, it moves the bottom? In this case, they're not independent. Now, you click anywhere on the timeline, and you've created another little box, which then you can drag down. Whoops, I created too many there. So now I'm just going to hit Cancel. Go back into Edit. All right. So I'm going to create one, and then it automatically creates one down here. So... Now, if I grab that box and pull it, notice now you can progressively say how much you want it to fade in and out over the course of how many frames. See, this is, it automatically defaults to um, seconds, but we can put it in frames too. So by frame 40, the left channel here will be faded out. Or the opposite, we can bring it up, pull this down, and say, okay, fade it in over the course of frames 29 through 40, or, you know, whatever we want. And then the same thing here we could do. Also, the plus and minus signs for the magnification. We can reduce this down to see the whole audio clip, and we could fade out for certain sections of it. Pull this down, do the same thing up here if we wanted. And then once we've created two, it'll move them both to the same, to the same place on the timeline, but not the same height as far as volume, like so. Then we could fade it back in if we wanted. Oops, I created another one accidentally, but that's okay. Um, so basically, these are volume envelopes. You can you can fade in and out to the degree you want over the time frame you want. You can scroll down the line here, and then fade out where you want. Just gives you a lot of flexibility over the audio you've inserted, which is rare. Um, for a program of this sort to give you that flexibility. So do some experimenting and you can play it as your um, I'm not going to play it through the whole thing right now but as you make changes to the volume envelopes you can play through and see if it sounds right to you. So there's a little bit on more on editing the audio we can insert. So I'm going to move this back to none actually so there's no audio here. I'm going to pull the properties tab back to where it normally is and I'm going to delete that from our library. 
Now, as far as importing video, you can import you know WMV files, um, lots of different types of files we can import into Flash and then convert basically into a Flash video. So there are lots of different options we have as we import. And you can choose to import in such a way that it embeds the video into the timeline so that at a certain point in the timeline it plays the video. Um, or you can have it loaded externally. So it's a separate file. And the advantage of both these scenarios is um, an embedded file works best if it's a short video clip, perhaps with no audio attached. Um, but if it's a larger file, large, larger than 10 seconds, let's say, um, loading it as an external video clip um, lets the files, as it starts to be downloaded from the server, allows the user to start to stream it. And that's called progressive download. Um, you can also set it up in such a way that it, I think we spoke of this earlier, where you can use a, vla a flash video server which will allow you to stream much more quickly, instantaneously perhaps. So, let's start by going File, Import, and here we have, we've been importing the library the whole time, but now we're importing video. Now, we see the standard screen that we're probably used to on other programs. Where, where's the video file, right? Maybe the file's already on the server. You choose that, but most of the time, you have it here. We're going to browse for it. And I'm going to choose our public folders within Windows Vista here. And public videos, sample videos. And I'm just going to pick this butterfly. Double click on it. There it is. Now, in order for you to see the whole thing, I have to move this up. Now I'm going to hit Next. Now here's the things we mentioned. Progressive download from a web server. That's probably what you're going to pick. But if you have Flash Video Streaming Service, that's how you'd want to deploy this this video as or from a flash media server or for a mobile device or as we mentioned you can embed it actually in the timeline so perhaps where you see an animation first and then later in the timeline uh, the the video comes on basically but we're going to leave this as progressive download from a web server now here we're given other encoding op options low quality, modem quality, um, flash 7, flash 8, 400 kilobits per second. I would just leave it as custom and after you've done a few you're going to see perhaps um, perhaps areas that you would you would choose to encode it differently. But for now I just leave it as custom where it's at. Now under video I would also leave everything here as defaulted, but you can change the quality, which may be something that you um, mess around with later. Also under audio, as we mentioned, for this particular video, you can change it to have a higher quality audio, but it defaults to 96K, which should be fine, at least for experimentation purposes in the beginning. Now here is another crucial area, crop and resize. We're given our little faders here, and as we move them, you can see the top here it's, redu it's actually cropping it. So this isn't actually resizing the video like we could here. This is actually cropping it like a picture. And you could then say, okay, I just want this section of the, the video to be played through Flash. But in this case, because perhaps you had a, a whole scene and some guy's just talking over here, and you want to just encode that section of it, which also will reduce uh, the file size and how long it takes for the user to download and, and all that. You could have multiple reasons for wanting to crop. But in this case, I am going to leave everything um, at zero. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. Everything at zero. So you can crop from whatever side you want. Resize video. You could choose not to resize it, and what this butterfly a WMV file could just play as normal, the size that it was. But I'm going to choose resize and we're going to choose 420 and it automatically adjusted the height because this is clicked maintain aspect ratio so you can reduce 
or resize the video from this point on. Hit next. And now it says the video skin determines the appearance and position in the play of the play controls. See like this. And um, you have a lot of different overlays that you can choose. In this case, I would leave it as default for now. You can change the color of it if you want it to be a red. Uh, whoops, I chose black. Black actually would be kind of neat because um, it kind of makes the controls a little more invisible. But you can make them whatever color you want. Red, like that. Um, the appearance and position of the play controls. The easiest way to get Flash Video up and running is to select one of the provided skins. Well, that's true. Um, to create your own look, you can customize it, as I mentioned. Um, you can remove all play controls, um, and you would choose none from the drop-down. But we're going to leave it because play, pause, and basically a um, person can play it, pause it, mute it, or adjust where they want in the video. So we're going to click Next. You are done entering the video settings. When you're finished, the following will happen. The video will be encoded, and this is where we're taking it from, the Butterfly WMV. You will need to copy the Butterfly FLV to the web or Flash Media Service server when you deploy the Flash movie. The video will be located at relative paths or relative to your SWF Butterfly.FLV file in this case. A Flash video component will be created on the stage and configured for local playback. The video component uses a skin. Uh, yeah, they're telling you all that. I'll explain some of this later. Um, all right, so I leave this unchecked. I don't know why you'd check it. Hit finish. And now here's where I'll end the lesson because it's going to take some time for this to encode. So stay tuned for the next lesson. We'll continue. And this shall be encoded by then.